Yo, what is going on, my fellow Italians? So, in this, what if I told you that you can actually kill uh, captains with only a single strike? Or you can actually also kill them with just a, maybe three shots from the bow? Well, yeah, that's not hacking and neither cheating, it's just really the best build in Shadow of Mortar. Which is what I'm, I'm gonna show you guys and explain to you what makes the build so you guys can replicate it on your games and pretty much go ham. Alright, this is probably going to be the best video you're going to see on this game because as soon as you get this build going, I mean, you're not really going to need anything else. You can, you know, you're actually going to get a ton of Mirian as well after you get this build. It's possible with a ton of gear. And you can also get captains. I mean, there's just endless amount of possibilities once you get this build to get going. So, I'm just showing you guys here. This is a, a bit of an example. I will, I will show you guys the build first. I will explain to you the build first. And then I'll, I'll have a few gameplays after of sieges, so you guys can see the build in action. Now this build is mostly, you know, more suitable for um, sieges, you know, fortress attacks and defenses, but it still works, you know, on the normal free roam of the map if if you intend to do it that way. Because uh, I'm going to show you guys variations also, you know, because I don't I don't want to give you guys the excuse that you cannot do a build that's this good because you don't you do not have the proper gear. So I'll also show you guys variations of gear so you can still have a pretty close to this type of build You know even though you don't have like the full gears that you need to get this this going while you're actually searching for them You know you can still have something that's gonna that's gonna be able to to easily carry you and uh, Make you insanely powerful so as you can see they're just like one shotting the captains and I'm, I'm gonna explain to you what makes this build Alright, so let's go, let's get into the, the build. Uh, my game is in Spanish, so I kind of apologize for that, so bear with me here, but I'll, I'll explain to you guys as best as I can in English, so you guys can understand without reading it. So, the first thing, the best, this is the, the correct setup, okay? So I'm using the, the Ref Giver sword, sword, Ref Builder, I think is the name in English, Ref Giver probably the name. So, it means you get 10 Fury for every execution. And right there on the secondary ability, I have I, I have to be rolled to get that one, which you get the 15% uh, more damage when you're at full health. Now this item is super rare, so you guys probably not gonna have it. So this is a few other variations you can use. You can use this where you get five uh, might for every 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 melee attack, which is the Armentine or something like that. It's gonna be the name in English, Amarantine, Amer Amarantine, something. It's gonna be probably like that the name. Now this one is the Humiliator. is the second best option for the Wrath Giver. You you get ten. 10 seconds of unmilited might after you kill a captain so you can just like chain the kills which is essentially what you're going to see me do here but without actually using you know I'm using the actual fury not the actual bonus of the sword to do that so but that, that's also another variation another the second best you can use is the humiliator now these are all pretty rare but if you have at least one of them you can already make a pretty good build now this is the life stealer I think is the name. It's just a not really the best option, but if in case you were running a build regarding health, like you're using the vendetta set, that you're using health for might attacks, you can use this to help you recover the health, so you can keep using the might attacks from the vendetta set. And that's just a you know a different option there in case you want to to use that. But these two are the best, as you can see there, the ref giver and the humiliator. And this is the final option, which is when you also very good with the vendetta set. For for every two percent less health, you get one percent more damage. And the second ability that I have there is you, you get 10 might for every critical hit strike. So that, that critical is anything, even the bow, which is a headshot, is always a critical. So that's going to give me 10 extra might, which helps me uh, build my might faster if I'm using the bow. That's the idea. That's why I have it there. Uh, this one is called the Devorator, I think his name. It's going to be in English, probably. Devour, something like that. I think it's Pain Devourer or something, Devourer of Pain, it's probably going to be something like that, the name in English of that weapon that increases the damage. Now as you can see I'm using the gems for all for increased damage, so that's all going to stack. And the only one that I use health is the dagger because usually I just use that out of battle so it helps me recover my health. I pretty much get full health back when I use the dagger that way, with that gem right there. But anything else as you can see is all damage, and you can see this one is pretty important as well for sieges on the ring because the rune because it makes your your followers kill the other captains way way faster so it helps with the speed now these two like i mentioned this is meant to combine with the vendetta set so that's why i have the dagger and the bow right there because the bow is going to give you 33 percent more damage when you're low on health this is really just for the the secondary bonus right there which gives me the the quick throw gives me full might so that that's the only reason why, and also because it's the Vendetta set. It's not really for the main bonus there, which is increased uh, stealth damage. Now this is another good option if you don't have the Vendetta set, which is the Soul Stealer. I think is going to be the name, in English. 
This this uh, dagger, I, I have the secondary bonus right there as well for getting might on the quick troll. But the, the main uh, bonus right there it gives me also elf arrows on the quick troll. So I can get like not only might but also get elf arrows on top of that. You know, so I'm getting both for the quick troll every like 20, 30 seconds. So it's, it's insanely good if you can get this. It's very rare, but if you can get this, it's going to be really a game changer. In case you don't have the vendetta set, you can sub substitute with that. So here at the Vendetta set, and like I mentioned, you get 32% extra damage is the main bonus for the, the bow. It's because we're going to be low on health to get the maximized damage is, is you know, it's best that we have this on. And the second uh, secondary ability that I got there is the one that gives me uh, 15 focus for every shot that I that I hit. So it helps me it helps me keep shooting, you know, constantly without running out of focus. That's the idea behind that secondary. I had to reroll all of these. I had to reroll them to get most of them. On the secondary slots, with something can, you can reroll with the gems. I'm actually going to make a video regarding how to farm gems a reliable way, not a glitch way. That is pretty much just as fast, but it's actually reliable. So if you guys, if it's if it's already out, try to find that on my channel. I'm probably going to link it below. But um, you know, also this way you can farm gems to reroll your weapons and also have all the full damage like you see me doing there. So this is another alternative: is the bow. Uh, this is both the main effect of him is gives me 30 percent extra damage when the hit the hit streak is above 10 so if you get a combo going and it's above 10 this is gonna you're gonna get 32 percent these these uh, variations here is mostly for the uh, the fact of the bow damage is very specific to the bow but the reason why we want that is because some some uh, captains are immune to executions so that's when you're gonna rely on your bow to kill them you know because usually they're either immune to the execution or to the bow so you kind of have to pick one or the other. So if they're immune to execution, that's when the, the bow is going to come into play. So that's why we have the higher damage here as well. And this this is the best one for, by far, which is 1% extra damage for, for every 1% less health that you get. That, that is insane. You can literally get like 80% damage or something like that if you're like 20% health, which is pretty much game changer. And that's not considering anything else that's stacked on top of it for increased damage, such as the gems. And on both of them, as you can see on the secondary uh, option, I have the 15 extra focus for every time I do a hit. And this is the third one, just in case you want to combo with the Vendetta set as well. It gives me more health. This is one is called uh, Life Repairer, Life Mender, probably is going to be the name in English. Uh, you get 40, 40 health for every attack that you do. And on the secondary slot there, a bonus ability, I have 15 extra health as well. So if you make the sum of both, it's going to be more than 50. That I'm getting for every shot that I do, so it can keep me going with the the vendetta set if I want to just keep using health for the might attacks in that way. You know, it's just an alternative, like I mentioned, if you don't have the vendetta set. But the, what I'm using there is going to be the best thing, and you can also use the bow here as I'm showing the the gem, the green gem on the bow on top of the the life mender. So it's going to stack. Those 20% is going to stack on top of all the 50 that you're already getting there. So you're going to get a ton of health back for every shot you do. You can just keep using the vendetta set to use your might uh, in exchange for health that way it's pretty easy if you if you don't have a you know a build that can rely on the humiliator or things like that to keep your might very high now going for the armor this is the one you want to use this is this is very crucial the marauder set so i'm using the arm marauder armor here as you can tell on the secondary ability is the i get 30 folk 30 fury points for killing a captain this is going to help us chain the kills and build our fury as we do so because essentially you're going to be on Fury the entire time, so this this helps us keep keep us inside the Fury. Now again, I'm going to show you some variations, but this is this is the best you want to use. We, this is in combo with the the Wrath Giver, so if you don't have the sword, you know this is not going to be very useful to you. But uh, if you do have the Wrath Giver, this is the armor that you want to use. This is going to be the primary option here. So you're going to get 30 Fury for every captain you kill. You, you're going to see how that comes into play when you see the. The gameplay of the fortress uh, assaults and defenses and now there are you see i have some epics above there as well i'm going to show you guys a few different variations but this is by far by far the, the main option as you can tell there i'm getting the bonus for having two more other sets as well and you see here i'm showing you that it's meant to combo with this weapon right here the the wrath giver you know so you're getting you're getting 10 for execution plus the 30 for the cap right now this is the variation if you don't have that if you don't have the Wrath Giver, you probably want to use this, which is the second ability there. Is the um, 10, again, 10 Might for a critical hit. So I can use my bow to pretty much farm. I can shoot the, the minions, you know, shoot the captains out on a headshot as well. It's going to help build my Might back so I can keep spamming the Might attacks, which is the most powerful things you can do. Now, as far as the, the epics, I have this one where you take no damage. Sorry, no poison damage at all. This is good. a good option if you don't have these. Very strong as well. 
uh, and you have this one where all all your uh, your damage is reduced by 55% if your might is on, is on is on full. And on the secondary slide, you can see there also have the the 10 mites for every every uh, critical hit. So those are a few variations, but obviously the Marauder set you, you kind of have to go with the Marauder set because the, the, this build the damage of this build relies all all around the the Marauder set. So it's definitely good if you don't have if you have the Marauder set there is the primary option. Now as far as the cloak, we're going to be switching either the, this one where we go on stealth mode uh, after we do the last chance. So essentially the, the idea with this is that if you do the the last chance, you you. Uh, as soon as you get out of it, you're gonna be on stealth, and you can just do do a stealth attack on a, the captain with a ton of damage, you know, for free essentially, just because you have this on, and uh, maybe even kill him that way. And uh, but the main option of the cloak is the the mask of the undead is the name of the one, the legendary right there. I think everyone guessed this just by playing the story, uh, which increases our damage by 32%, the melee damage by 32%, and the stealth damage as well. After we after you do the dashing, the you know the spectral dash, it increases the damage by 30, which is essentially huge. And the secondary bonus, you cannot re-roll it, but uh, it's still pretty useful. You know, it gives 50% less damage on your allies for undead. And considering we're going to be using the 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 Elven Rage a lot, the Elven Rage actually revives and makes the undead happen uh, in no spawn. So actually, kind of helps. You know, even though we're not re-rolling it, it actually does benefit us while using the the Wrath, uh, the Elven Rage. So it, we're pretty much going to be, you want to be switching these. You, you only use the above, the first one, the, the one that you go on stealth, uh, when you actually go into the, the last chance. That's when you, you open the menu and you switch it, you know. Not not during the battle itself. During the battle itself, we're using the, the Mask of the Undead, as you can see here. By far, by far, the best option. So we can you can get the damage on top of it. So keep in mind the damage here that I'm showing you, everything on the gear and everything is all stacking on top of each other. So I'm just showing you like you know individually each one, but it's all stacking in the end of the at the end of the day. And now as you can see there, I'm showing the yeah, I'm using the the red gem. So it's all stacking those those gems on the armor and the cloak are, are giving I think 15% each increase on the damage. And uh, the bow right there has another 30% from the red gem plus the you know all the damage that I'm getting from the bow itself as a the the main uh, ability, the main bonus that I guess. Now for the rune, you want to use this. This is very crucial. You want to use the uh, the primary option would be this that I'm using right here, which is the Marauder rune, rune Ring. And the secondary bonus is going to be increase the Elven Rage for 32% more time. This is this is pretty much crucial. You kind of need this to make this you know as efficient as you can get. And the variation would be this one, which it, again is the Marauder set, but you can use the with 15 uh, focus recovery for every kill it would be the second best option because that will help you you know keep the the bow shots going but but this is going to be this is meant to combo with the wrath giver but if you don't have the wrath giver then you know you, you know lasting 30 percent long is not really going to benefit you so just go with the 15 percent more recovery now this is another uh, variation an epic variation if you have the morale set you can use this one this epic ring which makes the the undead allies take 50 percent less damage uh, and you can even use this, if you re-roll the secondary ability of this, you, you can actually do another 50% less damage on top of it, so it becomes a 100. And this is another option of a ring, which makes you dominate them, you know, drain them 32% faster. And uh, if you combine this with a certain skill that I'm going to show you on the skill tree, you can actually dominate them in like 2 seconds, which is pretty much nothing. You can do that mid-battle, mid and it's, it's so quick that, you know, you can even do it like mid-battle. Instead of 4 seconds, which is the fall, is going to be 2 seconds. So this is the build right there, as you can see, two Marauder sets, two Vendetta sets, the Mask of the Undead, the Undying, I think is the name, sorry, the Cloak, and the um, and the Wrath Giver. The, the, the Marauder set, as you can see me showing you here, is really the key, because that's where the damage is going to be coming from, from that first bonus of having two Marauder sets equipped, where it makes it so you get 2% more damage for every Mirian, Mirian that you pick up. Now, the reason why we want the the, the Marauder set on the rune specifically and also on the armor is because those are the most common ways you're gonna you know make the, the thing spawn. If you use the Marauder set on the bow, for example, it's only gonna spawn increases the chance only when you're actually killing with the bow, but you're not gonna be always doing that. You know, with the armor, it's every every kill, no matter what, you're getting a certain percentage of chance that it's gonna drop a Mirian. And, and for the rune, because you're gonna be doing sieges, you know, there's a lot of people gonna be dying around you. So the rune is gonna make it so those people that die that are killed by your allies are actually gonna spawn the Mirian. So you're gonna see that when the gameplay it will become more clear. So let's go to the skill tree now. Now I'm using this, which is the um, 
shadow determination is written there i don't know if that, that would be the translation for english exactly maybe this is a different name but it makes it so every time you take damage you gain you gain might instead of losing it so this will make it so even usually if you take damage you lose everything with this you're actually going to gain gain more might and not lose anything so the second and the third option here is probably another the best option if you want to do it that way which is the i think it's called mortal mortal might uh it would make it so you get might a lot faster but if you leave the the you know the battle stage the the fight stage you lose everything and if you take a hit you lose everything if you lose your combo you lose everything the hit streak you also lose everything so it's kind of a you know bit risky in that way but it does help you gain a lot uh might a lot a lot faster from any any type of attack for using this instead of using the the one that i'm using where you get for actually taking damage which is not something you you're going to be doing a lot neither do you want to be doing but yeah so if you should probably you know want to be using the, the last one there this is very key as well uh using the getting the as you can see you can see by the image there if, even if you don't understand the, the language but um you're get, it was, what this is doing is actually giving us for every counter attack we're going to get one single elf shot this is just a way that we can use to you know if it happens if it's it does the situation happens you can still you can use the counter attacks to maintain your elf shots available just like I mentioned, some some captains are immune to you know executions. So you're going to be using your bow a lot, so it's good to have the the arrows with you every time. So this is the um, <clears throat> I've had for the critical hit chance. I have increased critical hit for every time your health is lower. So the lower your health is, the more critical hit chance you have. I think that's the best one since we're using the vendetta side. So we're going to be running low on health most of the time. So I think it does, this fits better, but you can use any, any of the other ones as well if that's your thing. And for the execution, we have the option here to uh, drain them on the floor. Uh, I just, that, that's just for if you want. You can use the shadow strike on this as well when you stun them and then just go for the drain. That's you know maybe you do, you're not gonna do this like mid battle. Usually you leave the the area of a uh, center focus of the battle just to do this real quick so you can recover your thing and come back to the battle. You know just an option there. Now this is very key as well. It's called. I think it's called incessant mites you know it essentially makes it so you um you know what, what's going to cost you two bars to do a mite attack is only going to cost one so you definitely want to have that there and this one is increases uh, our chances our last chances so we have three less chances instead of two you know just in case you, you happen to mess up you can still have there now that's the prestige that's more towards the end of the game if you guys are not there, but uh, it increases. In this case, I have level 57 right there, as you can see. So I got 32, 37, I think it's written right there. 37% extra might for every attack that I do normal, than, than, than what normally you get, you know. But it's not actually necessary that you have that. So as here, you, you can see we have this uh, spectral dash, which you have to do on, on while, while you're stealth walking. Now, we're going to be using both of, of these, but this, this, this is the worst one, okay? But it does have its, its useful, usefulness on certain situations. The reason why is the, the worst because it's slow. Not not that it's slow, but it's slower. It's slower for you to actually do an action after you finish the dash. You know, the other one you can do an action faster as you finish the dash. So that's why it's better. But uh, it does have these its moments. So for example, if you're if you're dashing near a no log, this is not gonna force you to do the animation where he tries to jump over the o log. So the other one will always force you to jump the o log when you don't really want to. Now this is for the brutal attacks. <clears throat> I have the one where you get bonus might for doing, uh, you know, a brutalize. But it's really, you know, nothing, nothing big deal because not gonna be doing much of that in the middle of the battle. But just in case, you know, you want to farm some might, that's for the reason why it's there. This is the one, just you know, not not really gonna use that, but just in case I can open, you know, poison grogs and everything, and uh, without actually wasting arrows. And this is the the stealth attacks where you can use the shadow to game kill multiple i just mentioned how you can go into stuff mode using that cloak so you know just in case you want to do that but it's not really you know super necessary as well now this is for this is also not useful at all <laughs> you're not going to use this in the middle of the battle which is this is mostly for stealth but i personally use the brutalize there on the this the spectral the ghost there this is also there doesn't even matter for sieges and everything but if you want to use that you know use whatever you want here the prestige here uh it increases the, the critical hit damage this is kind of good if you can have this as, as max as you can it's going to help you a lot you know increases by right there i have 50 percent extra damage on my critical hit from these uh, prestige points but uh you know just have this as high as you can is always going to help <clears throat> going back to the basic ones this one is for the you know the fire places i mean don't really matter what you use here, I personally just use the the, the goals. 
Now this is for the mobilize. I usually I use I use this one where uh, it makes the the others nearby flee. That's really good because you can actually do stealth attacks on the one that's fleeing. So if, for example, like I mentioned, I can get my health back from using the dagger. So in case I need help, for example, in the middle of the battle, I can just shoot anyone randomly in the on the leg, and people that are nearby are gonna run away. So I can I can then use the dagger on these these people that are running away to get my health back or build my might, whatever you know. It's just a way to create a, a brutalized situation. Now this is this is if you the one if you don't don't have might you can use this. Um, you can see from the image there as well, even though if you if you don't understand the language, but uh, <coughs> you can you're gonna use you know this is why also I'm showing you here. This is why we also have this at the counter attack, so it helps us keep this up as well. The, these attacks that require require off shots. Now here I'm showing you the might shot. I'm not using any elemental because if you use it, if you use elementals, the guys with the shield can avoid from the front. They're not gonna take any damage if they have shield. So, but if you take off the elemental ones and just use the primary, the guys with the shield cannot avoid it and they will still take damage. So that's why I use it there. Even the captains they'll get stunned by it. So it's way better without the elemental, unless you're going for a specific, you know, weakness of the the captain. Now here I have the shadow dominate, by far the best one for sieges especially. Because you want to be dominating the captain, so they they increase your numbers in the army, and they help you take the fortress even faster. <clears throat> For that reason, is what I'm using the uh, the shadow strike here. Moving on to the prestige, I have this. This increases the the focus you gain for every go, every strike type of strike, any strike at all. I have the almost 15 here points, as you can see. But uh, you know, not necessary. But if you have this, the the higher the higher you can, the better. This is very key as well. Like I mentioned, with the dagger, the gear that we we're using to get might to, might back and possibly even elf shots back, with the soul stealer dagger. Now this is very crucial that you use the third variation. He throws five of them because if you use the first one where he only throws one, you're only gonna get the benefit uh, relative to, throw, to hitting one dagger. You know. So for example, every dagger gives you one one out one shot back, one arrow back. If you throw five, you're actually getting five back. You know, so it's much better. Same thing for the might. <clears throat> so for that reason, we are using this. Now, at, at now going to the Elven Light. I think Elven Light is going to be the name. Where he punches the ground is the, you know, circle. No, square and, and X to do it. I, again, same thing with the might shot. No elemental because then the guys with the shield cannot avoid it for that reason. Unless again you're going for a specific weakness of the captain. So here for the 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 eye scene. Making them freeze. I use the one that increases the, the critical hit damage when you're actually hitting them. Unless you, uh, as you can see from the image there, I just think it flows better. Now for consuming, which is this, as you can see from the image there, I use the the shadow. You, you get like shadow combo with multiple. This is very crucial as you're gonna see because it helps us not only get health back but also had help help us get our arrow back in case we need it for exchange of a little might or health if we're using the the vendetta set. So. For every one of those, you, you're gonna get like almost 50% health back, and you're also getting the um, four sh four elf shots for every every shadow strike that you do that following. Now this is this is not really super necessary, but you can use the perceptive eye. I think is gonna be the name there, so you can get higher higher level gear and things like that. But you know, not not super. It's up to you. And the second option here, which is the right right below it, uh, which increases the domination speed. Like I mentioned, if you're using that ring. This one right here that I'm selected right now. If you're using that ring, we're going to increase to 32% the speed of dominating. If you combine with this ability, it's going to take two seconds to complete the full eye holding circle button. You know, it's really quickly. You can maybe even do that mid mid battle, depending on the you know how far away they are from you. It's pretty good. And this is also a way to you know just in case you want to use it, but not again not 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 necessary because we're mostly going to be using our weapons with these builds. Uh, now this is for resurrecting undead. I like to use the one where it resurrects captains, because you know, during the battle if your captains die, you can you can resurrect them. I I'm not sure, but I think you might be able to resurrect the enemy captains as well with this. I'm not entirely sure, but I know for sure your captains you can do this. So if they die in the middle of the siege and whatnot, the the fortress attack you can just revive them that way using might to do so. Now this is another prestige one. Uh, you know, gain health back for every attack. If you want to combo this with the, those builds, like I mentioned, the bow that gets health back from the shots as well. You know, it helps. Not necessary, but it helps if you have those prestige ones very high. Now, this we come to the summoning of the creatures here. It really doesn't matter, but you know, I'm just showing what I use personally. For the Karagor, I use this one where he can use the might attacks without actually having might uh, by trading for his health. 
Uh, some captains you can actually insta kill with the Karagor, but you know, doing this is good on a 1v1 scenario, but on a siege, you know, a fortress attack, you, you, you're usually not going to get the chance to just do this, so it's kind of useful, at least for sieges. As far as the Grog, I, mean, I like to use this one where he gains more health than normal from actually eating them with the, the Might attack, which is triangle and circle. The potency one, it does increase how much potency, uh, sorry, Might you get, but it's, you know, it's not really noticeable. Now here I like to use the summoning the Grog, especially for the, the fortress attacks, because it, you can use the Grog to destroy gates. So that that's gonna speed you. You're gonna see that I have a gameplay for an um, uh, online siege that's like above level 1,000 defense, and you're gonna see me using that a lot. The the crowd to destroy the doors it just speeds up everything. And here is the the shadow mount. I like to use the one where when you dominate a character, it just dominates all the other characters around. But it, you know this is kind of random. You're not gonna use this most of the time. As far as the Drake, I'm using the one where. Um, you can uh, your drag your dragon takes less damage, you know, overall less damage. But again, we're not going to use this for fortresses specifically, but that's what I use. The prestige one here is again less damage on the creature. If you have that, the higher you have, the better. Now, last one is going to be uh, debilitate. Is written there? I don't know if that's going to be the name in English. Maybe it's consume or something. Now, the the ability we're using for that is when you hold the circle. It's going to be this one where you get arrows back. This is going to be four arrows. So we get four arrows every time you, you consume someone or you know dominate anything of that nature. And this will combine with the this thing right here that I'm gonna show you right now. The the shadow thing, the shadow consume. This is why I have it there. So for every shadow consume of that, I'm getting four arrows back, which is a lot. Insane. Pretty good. A huge amount. You can get like four arrows for just two kills, like just like that in a single in a single blink. So for the um this little weapon, I'm not sure how you call it in English, the glaive, I think, probably is the name in English. I don't know, for sure. But uh, you can see it from the image there. I like to use the first one because you get more mites from it. You know, the, the second one, I don't like to use it because even though you do more strikes, you can actually get interrupted from those strikes. So it's kind of pointless if you can get attack in the middle of it. The, the first one, not only, not only do you get more might, but you cannot get interrupted from it. So that's why I like to use it. Now, moving on, this is for, I have the... The curse option here, where well, they have cursed weapons, my, my undead that I revised, simply because curse, you don't have powers for that, you know, on the skill tree, so you might as well have them have the curse. Now, here is for the, um, this is the, the what we're using for with the Mask of Undying, you need to have this to do the dashes. So, and like I mentioned, this is the, the best option, the, the one we're going to be using the most, and it's, it's faster than the one above where you dash on stealth mode. Because like I mentioned, you can leave the dash faster and start doing actions faster than you can do with the, the stealth dash. It's called Waters of Alorian, I can see there. So that's the name for this uh, specific ability here, if you want the name in English. And like I'm showing you here, this is better than this one that I'm selected right now. It's faster, you know. So we're going to be using mostly that instead of the uh, the one where you're, you're, uh, you're on... Um, stealth mode when doing the dash which is still useful like I mentioned but it's just for particular scenarios not not in general in general this one is the best and uh, now moving on this is kind of random as well but I mean I like to use the the spiders where you summon the spiders simply because you know they do more than, than you know a couple of guys will I don't have any bodyguards with me as well captains so uh, no reason for me to use that and the final one I like to use this one where you get your you make your uh, captains enraged by using a little bit of your fury, your uh, your wrath. Sorry, fury would be yeah in Spanish, but it's, it's called wrath in English. So yeah, so if I said that before, I'm gonna say fury. I mean wrath. Okay, same thing. And finally, but it's kind of random. You can use whatever you want here as well. If you want to use this one where it heals them by holding down on the the D-pad. And finally, the prestige one it makes you gain more fury per kill. This would be very good as well if you can have it, but you know, again, not super necessary. So let's go. Uh, now, final tip here before I show you guys the the games. Um, you want to um, something you can do before you start any sort of fortress attack or defense is actually gain. Right here, I'm just showing you how to farm your your wrath so you can get your elven rage ready. Like I mentioned, the wrath giver gives you 10 points for every kill, so every execution. So that's why you see me doing execution. It combos really well with the vendetta set as well because it gives you two extra executions. And I also have the dagger that gives me full might, so essentially I have six executions ready at any any time. 
essentially. So with those six executions, I'm getting 60. Uh, sorry. Well, yeah, 60 points for uh, for my my wrath, which is essentially the full bar. <laughs> As you're gonna see here, how how my wrath meter is building there. And you see, just like that, I'm already pretty much full on my uh, my wrath bar there. And you can do this before you go into a fortress attack. This works online as well if you go online or for your own, you know, offline fortress. It will still work. You you will start the attack or defense with your your fury, your wrath meter full. So that's just a little trick in case you guys don't know. So you see, like right now, I can start the the siege and I'm gonna be full in my wrath. As the, the game begins. So let's go to a few games here. Now I don't plan on commentating everything. I'll just let you guys enjoy it. And as you watch it. But I'm just going to. Uh, I'm just going to show up to explain you guys. Uh, the key points of the build. As it happens. So here I personally like to uh, focus on the. The beasts there first. So they don't kill my uh, my other beasts. On my fortress. So That's why I like to focus on them first. And as you can see the reason why we're using the mask of undying. Is because you're pretty much invulnerable. Like you don't take damage while, while you're dashing like this. So you know. You, 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 you know even though you're low on health as well. It's really not going to matter. Because you, you pretty much don't take any damage while you're dashing. So as long as you're dashing all the time. You're, you're essentially invulnerable to damage. So you see I like to take care of these first. So they don't kill my, uh, my, my other beasts on top of there. On the walls. Or they can do other stuff like kill my uh, my archers as well. So this is where it comes into play. The bonus from the Marauder said you gain two percent for every Mirian that you pick up. But that's not that that that's not a single like the the, the little icon Mirian. It means for every li literally every Mirian that you get. So every one Mirian is a two percent. So if I'm getting seven Mirian, that's seven times two percent increase in damage. You know, so that's huge. If you can imagine that I'm picking several of them, and you see just like that, two strikes, he's already dead. Now you see, I'm not using, I'm not using my, uh, I'm not using my wrath here yet, and even though it's already full. But uh, you can see here. Now I had to pause here for a second, but I'm gonna come back. There you go. And as you can see, I keep dashing. I'm pretty much in corner. And just like that, you see, because of the increased damage of the Marauder, he pretty much died in like three, three, three strikes right away. And not, not just the Marauder uh, damage increase, but also the, uh, you know, the dashing that I'm doing with the Mask of the Undead, which remember also increases by 33% my melee attack, which is the the executions, as well as other things. So again, three strikes and he's already dead. Because I'm on Wrath, uh, my might keeps building up. If you don't know, when when you're in the Elven Rage, your might keeps building up by itself without you actually doing attacks. So as you can see here, you, you, you just pick up as many Marauders. You, you can see how many Marauders are there. That's simply because, like I mentioned, every kill that I get, or every kill that my allies get, because I'm using the armor and the rune for the Marauder, is gonna, is gonna possibly do it, one of those drops. And like I mentioned, for every single Mirian, it's like a 2% increase in damage. So you can see I'm just picking up before, I'm picking up the Mirian before I actually go for the, the attacks. Now this is an offline uh, defense, but you're gonna see a, a online attack, online conquest soon, right after this game. So you guys can see, uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing like a super strong, uh, I'm trying to evade a super, right there, one, one strike, he's dead, just like that. This, this was almost one strike, but you know, he's already pretty much dead, just by this, this one, one strike again. And it lasts 20 seconds, okay, the bonus, the damage bonus from the, uh, this is a problem as well. Sometimes if he goes into talking like this, you can actually lose your wrath as you see me there. You're losing the wrath as it goes. Now the reason why it's taking so long is because of the bonus from the ring, as I mentioned, it makes 32% longer, the wrath, so that's why it's taking so long. And every time that you do the oven, oven uh, punch there on the on the floor, like you see me doing here, it counts. Every time it, it hits someone with that, it counts as a for whatever reason it counts as a as an execution. So it's kind of a bug, but you know, right there another single strike and he's dead. So every time I punch the floor with the oven light, as you can see there, it gives me my my uh, my uh, sorry ref, so I can keep going without actually losing. And remember as well, every time I kill a captain, I'm getting 30 might backs, 30 ref back. So. That also helps me keep up uh, with a never-ending Elven Rage. Right there, one single strike is dead. Now, like I was mentioning, the bonus from picking these these uh, Murian lasts for t 20 seconds. So this one that I just pick up is gonna last 20 seconds, you know. And it, it, they all stack on top of each other. So, but just know that after 20 seconds, the bonus is gonna go away, and you have to pick the Murian the Murian up again. So just keep picking them up. Essentially, <laughs> is the best you can do. And you see right there, I'm just like. <laughs> completely like annihilating everyone 
and uh, you could use the consume as well. I have to pause here again, but uh, you you can consume as well the the one with I think it's um, hex and and circle. You gotta do the consume, but like I mentioned, you can also shadow strike those, so you consume multiple targets. That way, you, you could also recover your health. Remember that on the secondary bonus ability from my wrath giver, I actually have the 15% increased damage when I'm, I'm full on health. So for this particular reason, since since our might is already building it by itself. You know, we're, we're not really using the, vans, the Vendetta set in particular here. Now, when I get to the bulls, you, you're going to see the reason why we, we still have the Vendetta set there is because, uh, some, like I mentioned, some captains are immune to executions. So that's when you're, you're actually going to use the Vendetta set to lower, lower, lower your health. And then what I do, I switch to that epic weapon that gives me, uh, you know, 1% extra damage for every 1% less health that I have. And I use that to get insane damage. That way, like 80% more damage on the... On the uh, the shots from the bow and that just completely annihilates them with the bow those captains that happen to be immune to the uh the execution now again like i mentioned this is an offline defense but we're gonna do a, a, a attack online after this so you guys can see how it works online which is a little bit harder than this defensing De defending is a little easier than attacking I i'm sorry it's actually the, the opposite but <laughs> i mean for this particular scenario offline it was pretty easy to defend so as you can see, they're just like annihilating. Just make sure you pick up the the Mirian before you go for the attacks if you actually want to kill them fast. The fact that we inside we are inside the Elven Rage as well makes it so uh, everything slows down, you know. So everyone's like slowed down except for us. And uh, so that little trick trick that I showed you that you can recover your entire wrath before actually starting the um, you know the fortress attack or defense assault or defense. You can do the same thing here. If you happen to lose your, your Elven Rage like you saw me there because he was talking too much, I can use my Vendetta set combined with my, my Dagger and Full Might again to quickly recover everything by doing executions on the uh, random guys that are around. Not to mention that this also makes them drop extra Mirian, so... You see right there, my Might is, my Wrath is full again, just like that. Even though he was talking too much and I lost him. And you're pretty much back at it again with the, the Elven, you know, bunch on the floor. And the uh, elven light, and oh, right there, he's immune to execution, as you can see. So this is this is the perfect example. This is when you use the the, the bow tactic, as you can see, or you can use this as well, because the elven light is gonna stun them. So we can use the elven light to after the stun, you know, because the elven light is still gonna do damage to them even even if they are immune to um, to executions in, in particular, as you can see right there. But uh, you, you know, you can do this as well. Use the I think it's the gleaver. I'm not sure if the gleaver is how it's called in English, but yeah. That little sight thing, whatever. And you see, he's not immune to execution, so he's gonna get like one shot it. <laughs> this guy, pretty much the same thing. I think that was like half. Of it. See right there at this point, the Mirian bonus has already gone most of it, so he he didn't die in one shot like the other guy did. But you can just like keep picking up again and again, and it will it will keep stacking. Now I, I'm not sure if it was in the game, but it, you, you, you know what you just figure if you get a captain that is immune to uh, executions like that, just switch to the bow. Uh, use the vendetta set to lower your health. And uh, if you have that bow, like I mentioned, the one that does one percent extra damage for every one percent less health that you get, you can easily kill them with the bow that way because you're going to be low on health. And you're getting like to, like eighty percent more like increasing damage. It's, it's actually even higher. The epic bow can give you higher damage than the uh, actual. Even that aside, will for having will have. As you can see right there, I'm just using the album light to keep my uh, my fury going. He's immune to easy right there. You can do that as well if he's immune to execution. Just use the the might attacks itself and the the, the side to the cleaver. Right there, he got one shotted because I already have enough Miriam that I picked up. And you know, see at this point, the the siege is already over. They didn't even get inside. And uh, because this is another trick as well, if you're inside the oven range, it's pretty much never going to end. You're 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 gonna be sitting at this end stage right here forever, so you can kill any remaining captains. <laughs> it's pretty fun as well, or capture them if that's your thing. So here we're going to the online uh, fortress attack. This one I'm not really gonna commentate over, so uh, you guys already know how to play it. But uh, I don't think I played this one as well, because this is one of my first times I was using this build. But you can see that I was I was constantly switching between things. So you guys are gonna see me like adapting and things. This ha they had like super strong. Um, this guy in particular has super strong defenders. The arc his arcs were almost cheated. I don't know if they're actually hacked or something, but 
they were super good. I, like some of them are not were not assassins. They they also had the the no chance bonus. So it was kind of like what? what? But still, I you know you guys will see how it goes. And I'll, I'll count. You see right there, like I mentioned, using the the I think it's Grog, yeah, Grog thing to destroy the uh, the the gates. In that case, my 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 blow up guys also helped. But uh, if he has the metal gates, you're gonna need the the Grog to break it quickly. So he's getting immune to execution here. So I have to use the bow. But anyway, I'll, I'll let you guys see it. And uh, if I see anything worth mentioning, I'll commentate for you guys. So you see right here, I'm switching my, uh, I'm switching to the epic bow, so I have extra damage. I think I switched the, the sword as well. Actually, probably not, because I'm still in the Elven Rage. But I'm using now, I'm now using the bow that does higher damage when I'm low on health, so I can get that guy that's immune to um, executions. But um, but you don't know necessarily need that. You can just keep using this, the normal attacks, because every time you do the Elven Light, they get stunned. You know. If you don't have the elemental on it, they get stunned, so you can just like do normal attacks then. And because everything is slowed down, you know, you can get it like that, you can just free attacks without getting hit. He's not immune to executions. See, like, like that as well. It's gonna do a ton of damage because you're dashing 32% extra damage from the Mask of Undying, you know, as well as the mirroring that you're picking up. Now this is what I mentioned about the shadow dominate, so you can you can get his orcs to your side, so they will help you uh, get the fortress way faster because you have you know higher numbers, more numbers. Not to mention these guys are like I mentioned they are super good. I actually saw them stats before I I started the mission, and they are super strong. Like you see, they're like immune to executions, to, to like bows, to arrows. They're immune to everything. They have like like five immunities, six immunities. They're like super good. So if you capture them doing a online conquest like this, you still you're able to use them on your own, you know, your own army later because they go to the garrison. So these, like for example, that the tower guy that I just captured, he's gonna go to my garrison after this the siege, and I can use him, you know, for my own defense or attack later. As you can see, that I was trying to switch my, my gear to fit the situation better, but uh, you know, like how you see everyone, everyone's like arrow proof. They're so good. The these guys orcs. But, you know, it's a above 1,000 level base, so you know, kind of expect that. And you see how fast I can capture because of everything that I'm using, as well as because I have high, higher numbers, I can capture the, the thing way faster. Now this was kind of weird. I wasn't expecting this. You kind of got me with an explosion there randomly. So you see what I mean? Uh, I think I'm gonna try. Yeah, this is when you you switch after you finish the the last uh, the second chance. You can switch this, and you're gonna get uh, stealth from it. You see that little smoke? Now I'm stealth mode now. In this case, I didn't need it because he, he's already dead. But uh, you're on stealth mode at that point. Sometimes it glitches. I don't know if it's a glitch, but the captains can still see you even though you're on stealth mode. So it happens sometimes. But uh, you know, for the most part, you can go into stealth mode as soon as you see that that smoke for a little time. And you see, now that I have already used this, the cloak, I'm gonna switch back. You can do this, the time, because you know, online conquest is all about the time, so you can get the, the gold uh, classification. So you wanna switch the gear to the situation as best as you can. But uh, you see right here, I didn't I, I didn't know at this point, the point that I recorded this game, it was it's probably best to do what I mentioned, use the vendetta sets to recover your wrath quickly by killing the random guys way better than doing what I'm doing here. I'm kind of adapting with other gear instead of getting my wrath back, you know? But uh, it would be way more ideal to actually focus on getting the... Not a, not ideal, but faster too. You just get the, the wrath back by doing executions. So I can go back into infinite Elven Rage mode. 
that's, that's probably would be the best thing, the best way to play this. And remember, if you don't have the the Wrath Giver, you would, you, you would just be using the Humiliator. Because then every time you kill a Captain with the high damage, you essentially, 10 seconds of full might, you can use that to, you know, if not kill another Captain to get another 10 seconds on top of that. You can uh, at least get him like very low on health to where where you finish him off. You then get the 10 seconds. Again. As you can see, that the damage is so high, he's already dead. So yeah. Now if you couldn't tell there, I was trying to Shadow Strike him but he was immune to the arrows. So I can't Shadow Strike him if he's immune to arrows. So what I did, I used my Vendetta set to be able to consume uh, consume him, which is the this X and a circle. So I traded my health to be able to do, which is a might attack, you know. So I, tra I traded my health to be able to dominate him right there, which is very useful. Another very good point of the Vendetta set. You know, mostly this build works best like that, with the Vendetta set, like I mentioned, the two Marauders. Uh, the rune and the armor, the mask of the undying on the cloak, and the uh, the wrath giver. That would be really the go-to build. And you really just switch to the bow with more damage in case you happen to get you know that single captain that's like so hard to kill because he's immune to execution. But he's not immune to two arrows. As you can see, I'm picking like a ton of mirrors. Everyone's gonna be like one shot at this point because of all the mirrors that I pick up. <laughs> One thing I need to mention, I'm not, I'm not using my quick throws very much, that's simply because I forget, but I could use my quick throw here to get my full might back. Sometimes you have so many things you can use, that I just forget to, <laughs> to use them, but uh, yeah. So you see right there, I use the grog to open the gate. You, uh, you can also consume, dominate the, the grogs, they usually spawn on top of the fortress. In this case, this guy was not using on the defense, but you know, you can use, you can dominate their grogs and use their own, their own grogs to open the, the gate, if you don't want to waste your summoning ability. And they're right there, I think I'm switching back to the, uh, the Vendetta set right there. So I have the option to waste my health for uh, might attacks. Now right there I switched to my health gem because I noticed I was a bit low on health so I don't want to gain it back. So I could use my, but again, I, this is just because I forget that I can use my my dagger. I could easily use my dagger to get that might. I don't need to focus on the health so much. So I just, but I, I keep forgetting to. And also because I noticed most of their captains are immune to arrows, so this, the bow is really not helping me on anything. So by getting the health back, at least it's gonna help me that way when I'm killing the normal minions, not the captain himself. I'm the boats you should. Now, in this case, he's a tank. You definitely want a tank. You always want to dominate because if I try to kill him, he's gonna. Do that little long talk, and it's not gonna let me because he's a tank, so he's gonna have the you know, daft challenge or something like that, and he's gonna get back up with full health. So, because in this case, I cannot dominate him because he's too high level, so I just shame him instead to make him leave the battle. Same thing here. This guy is a tank, so you don't want to try, don't want to try to kill a tank because uh, he's gonna go go back with full health. Well, in this case, he's an assassin, but uh, yeah, whatever. He's too high level, so I can't dominate him. Best to make him leave the, the battle so I don't have to deal with him. No, instead of telling him to, you know, fight me to death, that's not really ideal. 
So right now we capture all the arrows and I just need to finish it off the last the remaining guys, which most most of the remaining I think are immune to execution. Or actually both, maybe immune to arrows as well. Let's see how oh, see right there, immune to arrows. As you can see, we're constantly low on health, but this was not not a big of a deal because uh, you know we have the mask of and dying to keep dashing, and we're pretty much not never going to get hit that way. You see right there what I mean by using the gem to recover my health by shooting the normal guys. Right there again, I use my uh, the health that I gain to use the might attack to consume might attack to be able to. Not many him since he's immune to arrows. I cannot uh, shadow strike him. Shadow dominate. This was like super random right there. He kind of randomly just. You see, he he doesn't even know that he down me. He just like randomly hit me there. That can happen. <laughs> it's kind of random, but you know, sometimes it can happen even though you're dashing all over the place. But uh, it's pretty rare. Just a little tip right there, when you're finishing this heal animation, he actually becomes invulnerable. So, you see right there, he's hitting me, but it's not taking any damage, because he, he becomes invulnerable at the end of the healing animation. When you're finishing the, you know, the healing itself. See, now I'm actually using my dagger for the first time. You see right there, I used the dagger to get my might back, my might back, so that I could dominate him with the might consume. Should've done that, like, countless times before, but yeah, I just forgot. And you see, take note that I'm not using the Wrath Giver to do all of this, but uh, I could be using the Wrath Giver and this would be so much easier. So even though, even if you guys don't have the Wrath Giver, you can still, you know, do a pretty strong build with the, the, the options that I showed you. I already have a video on the channel if you guys want to look for that, probably link in the description as well. How to get the legendary that you want so you can get the more other side if you don't have it. So just check that video out and it's going to show you how to get the, the legendaries that you want. See at this point, I'm farming. I, I, I switched to the wrath giver again, and I'm gonna farm both my might and my wrath so I can go to the uh, the fight with the warlord. You know, by being full on everything. See, so I want I want to have full, full wrath when I'm fighting him. So I'm just farming it off to these guys. And right here, see the brutalize it also recovers my health, as you can tell there by the dagger. Not, it recovers my health because of the jam that I'm using, as well as my might. Oh, by the way, during this animation, the brutalized animation, any type of animation like this, the timer for the, the siege attack does not count down, so, you know, otherwise it would be pretty much impossible because there's way too many movie type scenarios. So, you see right here, I'm checking my build before I go inside. And here, here, by the way, I, I, I already checked the stats of the uh, the Overlord before I actually started the mission. And he, uh, see what, what I'm thinking here is I'm, I'm gonna set up the, I'm thinking about setting up the Marauder bow. Because like I mentioned, it's gonna help me get more Miriam to drop. Because the Miriam bonus damage is also gonna help me on the Overlord fight itself, you know. Because my allies are not gonna be there. 
the the bonus Marauder from the the rune is pretty much going to be useless. But if I use the the bonus on the bow, I can quickly kill his uh, minions around him to get maybe some Mirian to drop, and then I can pick up that Mirian to then you know kill him with the extra damage a little faster. <laughs> Deja que nos unamos. Lucha contra mí. Déjanos disfrutar. Bañarnos en sufrimiento. Let's see here. I'm checking his stats right there. You guys probably cannot understand it because it's in Spanish. But he has six immunities. He's immune to executions. He's immune to arrows. And he's, he's immune to every elemental right there. All four. He's enraged by beasts. And he's also a beast, beast slayer. Not to mention he's a, a tank, so he's gonna recover his own health with determination there. And he's also a group of all logs. He has like everything. He has the. You see right there? He has the these group of like, you know, guys that throw spears with him. He has like everything. This guy's super good. The only thing he's not immune to is this the stealth attack. But I cannot use the, any beasts to do a stealth attack because he's uh, he's immune to beasts. You know, he's a beast slayer. So he's pretty much unbeatable, you just have to beat him normally with normal attacks. But uh, the Wrath is going to help us do that, the, the Elven Rage. Without the Elven Rage, this battle was, would be pretty much impossible. But especially with that time in like less than a minute. As you can see right there, I'm, I'm just stunning him, with, stunning him with the Elven Rage. And then I'm, I'm doing damage with my normal weapon. I cannot do executions, you know, or anything. getting a lot of critical but remember that I get 15 extra damage from the secondary bonus of the UF. and now I'm gonna capture him so I can use him as my own overlord <laughs> on my uh, my base later and also because he's a tank so I don't want him coming coming back with full health and just like that we got the gold and uh, so yeah guys that's the build you saw right there how it is on online you can definitely play better than this using this build but uh, you know I showed you offline how it does as well, so it's pretty easy. You, you can definitely get get the, any fortress by yourself just having that infinite album rage, you know. Or the humil humiliator as well helps a lot with that, you know, just having might attacks all the time. But I guess that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, this is the best build in Shadow of Wonder.